Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies, and this is a channel about all things migration. Today, we're continuing with our snapshot series or our migration snapshot series, where we focus in on one specific country in the European Union using the Knowledge Center on Migration and Demographies Atlas of Migration, which is a really great source for information on European immigration and emigration. If you're interested to know more about that, you can check out my video on the Atlas of Migration. Here, I'll link it also in the description below. But today, our snapshot is going to be on Greece. So let's jump right in and get started. And what I'll do in this video is look very quickly at population rates with regard to emigrants and immigrants. I'll look at residence permits and visas, asylum applications. We'll even look at one measure of irregular migration. We'll also look at citizenship and naturalization rates, as well as indicators of social inclusion and also some education and employment indicators. First, let's look at population indicators. So in Greece, there are almost 11 million people. And of those 11 million people, around 6.8% are immigrants from outside of the European Union and 1.6% are immigrants from within the European Union. So compared to other countries, I would say in Western Europe, you don't see as high stocks of immigrants in Greece as in some other countries. Here we have around eight to 9% of the population that is actually an immigrant. Now let's look at flows. And when we looked at the stocks of immigrants, that was for 2020, let's look at annual flows of immigrants and for that we'll look at 2018. If you're interested in the difference between migrant stocks and migrant flows and want to know more about that in general you can check out my video on that. I'll also link it in the description below. So let's first look at immigration and immigration has to do with people entering the country. And in 2018, around 59% of the people who entered Greece in that year were from outside of the European Union and 41% were from within the European Union. Now, if we look at emigration or people who leave the country or who have left Greece, we see that it's quite split. So we have 49% of people went to outside of the EU and 51% went within the EU. Now let's look also at residence permits and we can start with first residence permits issued during that year. And in general, residence permits are issued for non-European citizens since residence permits are often not necessary for European citizens. And what do we see here between 2016 and 2019? The majority of the residence permits or the first residence permits issued in that year were for family re reasons, either family reunification or family formation, or for other reasons, which also could have to do with asylum seeking or refugee status. We see a little bit having to do with work and really a tiny sliver with education, but really the majority is for family reasons and other reasons. If we look though at valid residence permits at the end of the year in 2019, we see a little bit more for work reasons, but then again, more for family re reasons and even more for other reasons. Now let's look at asylum claims. And what you can see is that first time asylum applications were increasing between 2006, 2016 and 2019. We can also see like in many other countries that men made up a larger proportion of those who are seeking asylum than women. But if we look at first instance decisions, so what were decisions taken on these asylum applications, you can see that actually in many cases, half or more between 2016 and 2019 were rejected asylum cases. We do see though that especially between 2017 and 2019, quite a few people did receive um, refugee status based on the Geneva Convention. And of course, if you know very much about what's been going on in Greece, um, we, we have seen a large number of, for instance, people from Syria um, seeking asylum in Greece. So this makes complete sense. Now we can also look at one indicator of irregular migration. And one way that we can do that is to look at the number of people who were ordered to leave the country. So not not having the right to stay in the country and those that actually did return. And between 2016 and 2019, we can see that anywhere between 12 and 56% of people who were ordered to leave the country actually left. So that difference 
are generally people who will end up in some kind of irregularity, not having the right to stay in the country. Now let's turn our attention to citizenship and naturalization. What does naturalization mean? That has to do with people acquiring the citizenship of the country in which they are residing. So in this case, in Greece. And what we can see here again are the differences between EU and non-EU nationals. So we see it's mainly non-EU nationals who are acquiring citizenship. We can see this between 2015 and 2018. And we can also see the share of foreign citizens who have acquired citizenship in those years. Again, it's not large numbers. Um, it's not large proportions. Um, and when it, it is, then we do see it's mainly non-European citizens, which again makes complete sense because European citizens generally already have the same rights or many of the same rights as uh, Greeks in this context. And so it's more beneficial for people coming from outside of the European Union to gain citizenship. Now let's look at some indicators of social inclusion. And let's start with looking at income. And if we look at income, we do see that um, nationals or Greek nationals do have the highest levels of income. However, it's actually quite close with other European nationals. So European immigrants and non-European immigrants have very clearly the lowest, uh, the lowest income. If we look at overcrowding rates, so again, overcrowding is higher in immigrant populations and particularly those from outside of the European Union. Overcrowding has to do with the number of people that are living in a household. If we look at also the risks of poverty and social exclusion here, both of adults and children, we also do see that there are much higher risks of being in poverty or being socially excluded among immigrant groups than among the national group. And we also do see that this risk is also higher among non-European nationals. Now let's look at education. And if we look at education here, at the educational attainment, both of nationals and European immigrants looks very similar. Nationals have slightly higher levels of high education and European immigrants have slightly higher levels of mid levels of education. The difference is more stark with migrants from outside of the European Union that are more represented in the low levels and medium levels of education. Now let's look at some labor market indicators and the usual ones that we look at here are employment rates and unemployment rates and long-term unemployment rates. And what you can see here is that in general, natives seem to be doing better with regard to employment rates and also not having as high unemployment rates. When it comes though to long-term unemployment, we see that um, nationals do have higher rates of long-term unemployment than uh, um, non-nationals or than people who are, are immigrants. If we break this down by different levels of education, so we can look at low, medium, and high levels of education, which makes a lot of sense since your education level also has a lot to do with your opportunities on the labor market. We can see that at high levels of education, it's very clear that nationals have much higher rates of employment than immigrants. If we look at the medium skilled group, these look much more similar with even non-European nationals having pretty high rates of employment compared to the other groups. And if we look at low levels of education here, again, immigrants are actually performing quite well here compared to natives. Now, I hope this just gave you a quick look at the migration situation currently in Greece. If you're interested in migration snapshots of other countries, again, do check out those other videos. As I said, I'll link them in the description below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and definitely hit that notification bell so you, that you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week on all different kinds of migration topics. If you're an immigrant in Greece, let us know how that's going. Let us know about your own situations there. If you do have any questions about migration, do let us know and we'll try to get back to you. And I do hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.